Bun venit la o nouă ediție a emisiunii Ziua se apropie. În minutele care urmează vă prezentăm un interviu realizat de colegii noștri de la Christians for Israel cu Cohen și Ira Carlier, liderii echipei Alia și a organizației Christians for Israel, care se ocupă de repatrierea evreilor din Ucraina. În această perioadă, de la începutul războiului din Israel, accentul s-a mutat de la Ucraina la războiul din Israel. Războiul și oamenii din Ucraina par a fi uitați. Totuși, lucrurile nu stau chiar așa. Munca importantă din Ucraina continuă, iar Cohen, Carlier și echipa sa lucrează zi și noapte pentru a ajuta poporul evreu din Ucraina. În ediția de azi ei povestesc despre situația din Ucraina și despre lucrarea lor de acolo. Cohen spune că orice s-ar întâmpla, alia, adică repatrierea israeliților, continuă. Vizionare plăcută! Welcome in our Christians for Israel studio! Today we have very special guests, Kun and Ira Karlir, our team leaders in Ukraine. They are now for a few days in the Netherlands and we welcome them in our studio. A wonderful opportunity for us to uh, give you an update about all the work they are doing in Ukraine. Welcome Kun and Thank Ira. Thank you for having us. Since the October 7 atrocities in Israel and the Gaza war, mm -hmm. there is a lot of media attention for what's happening in Israel and Gaza, but not that much as it was before about the, the war in Ukraine. So how is the war in Ukraine that is still going on between Russia and Ukraine, how is that war developing? I think um, we especially see in the last six months an increase of attacks, basically from both sides. Uh, Russia is attacking infra infrastructure, schools, hospitals uh, and other areas in Ukraine. And, uh, but also Ukraine is attacking uh, infrastructure, uh, especially uh, huge uh, fuel tanks also uh, in different places in uh, Russia. So the war or uh, the rockets uh, is uh, attacks intensify uh, like over the last six months. And now with the coming months and also the winter, it's, uh, it doesn't really look uh, good. It doesn't look good. Yeah. And how is it uh, in the city that you were living with your Christians for Israel team? Is that city also under uh, attack? Well, we have uh, we have two big bases in the Ukraine, and uh, where we live, it's uh, we uh, often we have air sirens. Time to time, we have attacks of uh, drones and rockets. Uh, not in the area where we live, but nearby or in cities and villages nearby. And now, because of uh, the infrastructure is hit so badly over and over again. Now we have two hours electricity on and two hours off. Mm. And that's for the most uh, places in Ukraine. Mm. And then there was a few days ago, um, the rocket attack from Russia to the child hospital in Kiev. Yes, we um, only such a things that will reach uh, the news because that was really uh, shocking. It was the biggest children hospital, especially also for uh, cancer treatment for mm. small children that was uh, attacked. I don't know if it was the purpose or not. That also was very close to the headquarters of the Jewish agency mm. in Kiev. And uh, that was really shocked. So that's why it uh, reached the news uh, basically all over the world. But um, that was something unexpected. Mm. It happened. And it still uh, looks like it's Russian uh, roulette. You never know where are the attacks, drones, uh, rockets will uh, fall. Uh, but uh, we had it in Kiev, but it's actually every day around between 30 and 50 cities in Ukraine are attacked by drones or rockets. And every day it's uh, going on. And only the, um, the big attacks or with a lot of dead or wounded, this is uh, now reaching uh, the news. Uh, That's very heavy. Yeah. Very heavy. Yeah. And you, Ira, you are a Ukrainian yeah. yourself. How does this terrible war affect you personally? Uh, you know, I'm Ukrainian and uh, I was born and I grew up in Ukraine and we still live there. That's the country where I belong to. So for me, it's especially hard to see my family members, to see my friends, to see brothers and sisters from the church who influenced by the war. 
And uh, in Ukraine, I think there is no family that stays indifferent. The life has changed tremendously and uh, many people flee, many people uh, displaced, and many people also have worries for their husbands, for their sons, for their fathers who have to fight and be in the war. So it's, my heart is also bleeding for my country. Yeah. Your heart is bleeding. My heart is yeah. bleeding yeah. for country, yes. Because that's, that's my nation, yeah. that's the land where I belong to. Yeah. Can you sleep during the night? Yes, we have to sleep. If you yeah. want to go on with our work, we have to sleep. But of course, as any human being, uh, we have worries. There are moments when fear comes, yeah. uh, when worries come. But I think in these moments, we trust the Lord more than ever before. Yeah. And without, without this trust and without hope in Him, you just cannot yeah. move further. Yeah. So now you can move further, but there is still always fear in your body and in your heart. I cannot say always, but there are oh. moments when it comes. Yeah. Oh. When you are concentrated on your work and when you do what you have to do, you kind of forget about it and you just move, yeah. you know. But sooner yeah. or later the moment comes when you have this fear, but uh, yeah. then you say, okay, yeah. we are yeah. in the hands of the Lord. And at that moment, that's the moment when you have to kneel down and ask Lord to give you strength and power. Yeah. And that's why he says, do not fear, right? Yeah. And and that's what we try to do. Yeah, that's what you try to do. Yeah, that's a very good expression. Yeah. And still, despite the war, the work that you're doing on, the, on behalf of Christians for Israel and Ukraine is still going on. You're active in Aliyah, food parcels, food kitchen, uh, the sponsor plan for the Holocaust survivors and Jewish elderly. How is the work developing? It also surprises me that at the beginning of the war we didn't know what uh, we were, what we still would be able uh, to do. But to our surprise, uh, of course, we prepared before the war in the end of 200 and, uh, 2021. If the war will happen, we prepare for that. But uh, when the war started, we didn't know how we will, could be able to continue our work. But uh, we informed and prepared the soup kitchen uh, to have enough food to have generators, which now it's very important to have. Yeah. And, uh, and the food parcels, uh, grocery uh, warehouse still delivers, so we can still pack and distribute. And the Alia, it's continue. So uh, to our surprise, we can continue to our work. We still come to many places very close to the war zone. Of course, we cannot go into the war zone, which is understandable, of course, and you are not, not allowed to enter there. But uh, we continue with our work, reach out uh, to people in need with food parcels, meals on wheels, yeah. Uh, with a sponsor plan for elderly people and uh, for Holocaust survivors, yeah. and uh, and very important, what is very close yeah. to the heart of the, of the Lord, it's with the Aliyah to help in a practical way to help refugees, repatriates from Ukraine, bring them to uh, bring them to one place uh, closer to the border. People can stay overnight, and the next day we bring them to Moldova for their repatriation or a consul checkup yeah. before they go to Israel. Yeah. And um, about the food parcels and the meals on wheels. Um, how many food, how many meals for how many people? We, uh, we have uh, 19, uh, Christian for Israel sponsors, 19 soup kitchens with uh, meals on wheels. And uh, also the, where people can come and to pick up their meal. And uh, 19 cities all over Ukraine. And the main cities, we have a request for, uh, for, uh, to sponsor more soup kitchen. But that's what we can do for the moment. We will see. And for the food parcels, we pack and distribute an average of 30,000 food parcels, 10 kilograms each. Also all over Ukraine, but also again mainly to the places in the south and the east closer to the war zone. And uh, uh, we come several times a year, we come back to the same places with the food parcels. So 30,000 or 300,000 oh. kilograms, that's already quite yeah. quite a lot for what uh, we pack and distribute. We are our small yeah. team as well, yeah. volunteers included. But that's much more than it was before the war started. The food parcels, uh, eh? Yes, we did an average, let's say, of, uh, of 20,000, yeah. but now it's uh, 30,000. And uh, if we would uh, fulfill all the requests, we, we, uh, we should, uh, there is a need of 40,000, basically. Oh, okay. so, but uh, we also, the food parcels, we distribute. We also inform the people they can make aliyah, they can prepare their documents, they can go for a concert checkup, we can help. 
In a practical way, we also have a shelter close to Kiev. We have a shelter close to Venitsa, close to Kiev. It's for the for doing the papers at the consulate, Israeli embassy, and a shelter close to uh, to uh, Vinitsa is to uh, help the people uh, to make Aliyah via Moldova. Yeah. Yeah. So, so there is an increase in food parcels, but uh, also an increase in in requests for helping people. Yes to make the documents ready when they want to yes. go on Aliyah. Yes, the yeah? request of food parcel increased, especially in the areas where close to the war zones, like Kharkov, uh, Odessa, Zaporozhye, as there are still elderly Jewish people who are staying in their homes. Some of them simply cannot get outside and have a patronage or daycare ladies who help them. Some of them cannot go to the shops or electricity goes off and people cannot walk down the steps of their flats. So that's why the increase of uh, num the number of food parcels has increased and we are trying to reach them as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then the sponsor plan. There is a sponsor plan as Christians for Israel to help uh, Jewish elderly and Holocaust survivors, also yeah. in Moldova. Yeah. You are now active. How is that developing? And also in Israel, because at uh, the beginning of the war, we uh, helped, uh, we evacuated a lot of elderly and Holocaust survivors from Ukraine via Moldova to Israel. Yeah. Anna Mona, who is responsible for the sponsor plan, she said, hang on. We sponsored the people when they were in Ukraine with medicine or with extra food or different needs. But a lot of these people now are in Israel. So we need to visit and continue to help them with the sponsor plan in Israel. And that's what she's doing a few times a year with some of our team members. Visit the people for the sponsor plan. We have now over 1,200 people in Ukraine, in Moldova and, and in Israel to visit, encourage, comfort them and also help with different needs because to immigrate or to make Aliyah and integrate in Israel, it's all, in, in Israel, it's also not easy. Yeah. So it must be amazing for them when you visit these Holocaust survivors in Israel. That's amazing. Basically for all the Olim we help, help them from Ukraine via Moldova to Israel. It's amazing for them because the Olim remember always the date when they left and who helped them. But more amazing is if we then come, we cannot, of course, visit everybody, but if especially if we visit then the elderly and the Holocaust survivors that we help from Ukraine to Israel, if we visit them in Israel, they said, we cannot understand it. You followed us and helped us in Ukraine. You brought us to Moldova. We thought that's it. And now you even visit us in Israel. And, and it gives hope, it gives joy to the people. Yeah. We are not alone. Yeah. Now we see, we, we survived the Second World War. We know what happened. And, and uh, we never thought there will be a second war in Ukraine. But now we are in Israel, in the land of our forefathers that our grandparents told us about, but they couldn't go because of the communist system. Mm -hmm. And now you come to visit us. It's mm -hmm. a real a comfort and a joy for our heart. And many say in the end, there must be a God. Yeah. So, um, and also amazing that in the past, Christians often oppressed um, and often killed Jews in Europe. And now they receive love and solidarity and support yeah. by Christians. We now. cannot change the past yeah. case, but the Bible uh, speaks very clearly that God we call the nations to help the sons and daughters of Israel to come yeah. home. Yeah. We cannot change the past. We do can change the future. Yeah. And that's what we're helping, uh, to help in a practical way in the Aliyah, not because we want. The Bible mentioned yeah. about it, and, yeah. and we say to the Lord, Hineni, here we are. Yeah, wonderful. Here I am. And um, Ira, uh, some of your team members are men, Ukrainian men. Uh, who have to drive the food, the food parcels, the meals to all those Jewish communities. Uh, they have to drive the Olim to Moldova. But every day they can expect a message from the government that they need to go to the military service yes. themselves. It must give them some fear or tension. How does... uh, yes, they have fully understanding about uh, being called to the army. And more than that, as uh, Ukrainian citizens, they went to the military department to register themselves, to renew their information. And yeah, what can we do? Eh? We pray and we say, God, if it's your will, the work goes on, mm. we go on. And they fully understand that they can be stopped at the blog post or somewhere by the mm. police, but they said, 
God brought us so far, we will go on. As long as there is His will, we will go on in this work. And bravely they drive mm -hmm. even to war zones, uh, to Kharkov, uh, Zaporozhye, all the areas, Nikolaev, brave team and feel really wow. blessed that they can do this work. It's, we don't take it for granted, yeah, yeah. but we really appreciate this boldness and uh, desire yeah. to help and serve and go on with the work. So then you indeed have a, a wonderful, incredible, wonderful yes. team because believing and trusting in God, they continue their work yes. driving through the country to do this uh, yes. important work and trusting God that He will guide their yes. lives. It's That's... easier to say than to do. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to say we trust the Lord, but when you have to do in a practical yeah. way, yeah. knowing that shelling yeah. may be happening and you can be stopped and called to the army to fight, but they yeah. really exercise it and they really yeah. do it. So For me, in a safe country, it's easy to, to say that, but they, no. your team, you are doing it. Yes. Wonderful, yeah, yes, wonderful. Yes. And then Kun Aliyah, um, despite the war, still there are Jews leaving Ukraine to go on Aliyah to yeah. build up a new life in Israel. Yeah. You still have weekly your trips to yes, Moldova. Yes, that's uh, what Israel will never stop. That's the Aliyah, that the homecoming from the Jewish people from, from the four corners of the earth. So now, even during the war in Israel, around 2,000 new repatriants, uh, Jewish people, families from all over the world, every month, 2,000 or more are yeah. coming to Israel. That's yeah. really a miracle. Yeah. No matter what, the Aliyah, which is very close to the heart of the Lord, it's mentioned basically on every page of the Bible yeah. about the restoration, about the homecoming of the Jewish people yeah. that continues. And even during the war, maybe the few days after 7 October, it was coming to a standstill, but now average 2000 and about uh, 30 or 40 yeah. percent are coming yeah. from the land of the north, which yeah. means Ukraine, Moldova, yeah. Russia, White Russia, yeah. and so on. And there is a special passage in the Bible uh, because these people who are leaving, uh, of course, they come with stress, with fears, and then uh, we are there to help, to comfort. Uh, they are spending one or two days worse in the bus. And uh, because now we see, because of the mobilization law, and many men, healthy men between 80 and 60, are not allowed to leave. Who are many people that we have on our buses bringing from Ukraine to Moldova and then to Israel? It's mentioned in the Bible. I would like to read from Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 8 and uh, 9. And uh, see, I will bring them from the land of the north and gather them from the ends of the earth. Among them will be the blind and the lame. We have often blind and lame people, yeah. not fit for the army or mobilization, expecting mothers and women in labor. A great throne will return. The youngest child was seven days old and the oldest person was 99 years old. A big, a, a great throne will return. That we see and it continues. They will come with weeping that we often see. People, when they share their story that they had to flee the war or the bombs or whatever, they come with weeping. They will pray as they bring them back. I will lead them beside, I will lead them beside streams, streams of water on the level path where they will not stumble because I am Israel's father and Ephraim is my firstborn son. What's mentioned here in the prophets so many years ago, thousands of years ago, we see happening in front of mm -hmm. our eyes in Ukraine, that they come, the blind, the lame, expecting mothers, a big throne will return, and we are there to help in needs, to help in a practical way. And this is what it's all, what is bring the Jews, it's all about, to help in a practical way, to share the promises of God for them, and then trusting the Lord will further help and bless them in the land of their forefathers. Yeah. So, an increasing demand for food parcels and meals, an increasing demand for helping Jews to go on Aliyah, to bring them. Uh, so your work is becoming more and more and more important nowadays and in the years ahead. And the prayers of the supporters of yeah. Christian for Israel, like I mentioned already a few times, is like the fuel for our yeah. work. Yeah. 
Your so, prayers is the fuel so, for our so work. To our, continue. So our prayers are important, the fuel for the work you're doing. Yes. Kun and Ira, thank you for coming. You had a busy day today, meeting many people, updating us about the situation in Ukraine. We love it. <laughs> and you love we it. Love it. <laughs> Great. May the Lord bless you. And we hope to meet you back again here uh, once in the coming months or years to update our viewers, our supporters. Dear friends, you heard it. The work in Ukraine that Kuhn and Ira and their team of over 20 people are doing daily in Ukraine is more and more becoming important. Anti-Semitism is on the rise. The request for Jews to go back to the land of Israel is rising. The request for food meals is rising. So we thank you for your prayers. We thank you for your support. And I would recommend you to continue your prayers and support for Kuhn and Ira and their team in Ukraine. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, we praise your holy name. We thank you for all the good work that Kuhn and Ira and their team are doing in Ukraine. We thank you for the power that you give them, the strength, the comfort, and also the hope to continue the work that their team members in full faith and belief are going on with their work every day. Will you bless Kun and Ira and their team? Will you protect them in these times of war? Will you continue the work that you called them to do? We also pray you for the Jewish people in Ukraine. Help them, Father in heaven, to go back to the land of their forefathers. Will you bless Israel? Will you protect your people? So we pray you in the name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Emisiunea Ziua se apropie, se încheie aici. Vă mulțumim pentru atenție și vă dăm o nouă întâlnire săptămâna viitoare la aceeași oră. Sunt Codruța Borghelea, vă spun la revedere și Dumnezeu să vă binecuvânteze! Thank you.